Christopher. So please welcome our theological reflector, Dr. Mary Lou. So one thing I'm not is Quinn Caldwell, so I'm really not that funny. <laughs> Just want to let you know in case you didn't notice. Um, the, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, a, 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 an amazing miracle is taking place here this evening. We are ahead of schedule. <laughs> Which of course means you all should duck because Jesus is returning any moment. <laughs> uh, the first thing I'd like to say in reflection upon the meeting so far is simply about the meeting itself, the fact of meeting. Um, we, we come to these meetings and we tend to take them for granted, I think, the fact of gathering and um, uh, please don't do that. Don't take this exercise of gathering to govern ourselves and to arrange for our common life and provide for it. Don't take it for granted. Those of us like me who come from traditions where um, the governance of a common life is reserved only to a few, um, we don't take this for granted ever. This is a, an amazing event for me. I've been to a million annual meetings, both on the local church level, conference level, I've been to synods. The fact that we gather and together regulate our common life and govern it according to the best lights the Spirit gives us is an extraordinary thing. And I do not want you to take it for granted. This is miraculous. It never gets old for some of us. Um, it's a privilege and a, a delight, not a duty. And it is one of the greatest gifts um, that has been given to us in our Reformed tradition through our Puritan forebears, who believed um, and, and, and died for this belief, many of them, uh, that the Holy Spirit acts most effectively to reveal to us the will of God when many are gathered. So God bless us for gathering here today in that spirit. Don't take it for granted. The second thing I want to say is um, how much I enjoyed the little messes at the beginning of the meeting. And I say this with all due respect to those who worked so hard to make this thing go off so smoothly and dropping the ball all over the place. This is so fabulous. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry that it made you nervous or whatever, but I just really enjoyed a little confusion and organizational stuff at the beginning. It's a great blessing, actually. The worst thing that could ever happen to you is that your life goes off without a hitch. Well. <laughs> really, that's bad. So, rejoice and be glad. Um, mistakes are so fabulous. Um, the, the third thing I have to say has to do with our, um, our reflections on uh, the budget. Um, I'm sure that wasn't at the top of your list for spiritual moments and moving uh, mystical experience. Um, but the more I think about this and the more I live my life, um, I realize that these nitty-gritty things, the infrastructure matters, the behind-the-walls and behind-the-scenes stuff, um, really are as sacred as anything. Uh, and not just because money is good and we need it to create a common life that is rich and flourishing, but they're sacred because um, somebody has to repair Jesus' sandals when he loses a strap, and somebody has to caulk the boat that makes it through the storm, and this is what we're doing when we talk about numbers or, or talk about nitty-gritty committee assignments and all that kind of stuff that usually makes your eyes glaze over. This, this, these are the, um, the deep preparations for ministry um, that, uh, uh, you know, that are, as a friend of mine always says, as sacred as anything. I want to talk also about the, um, the justice resolutions that were presented here tonight. I don't, I don't want to talk about them specifically. You did that. But I believe that God is especially present in our communities um, when we are wrestling deeply with the conundrums that justice um, issues pose to us. Um, and I do mean conundrums. I mean, there are no questions in our world that are important questions um, that um, uh, don't come with disclaimers and dependent clauses and asterisks and parentheses. There's nothing absolutely clear about any of them. What we say on the one hand, we have to modify a little bit on the other. Um, we're always looking for ways of balance and of um, wisdom through the difficult, thorny patches of justice issues. And I think that if you really do believe that you see it absolutely clearly, you probably haven't gone deep enough. You probably haven't gone deep enough. Like Jacob at, at, at the river, remember? You never go that deep without some injury. 
Uh, and if you've gone that deep and you've come up wounded in some way, um, congratulate yourself, I think, or let the spirits congratulate you. Um, if it's been a true wrestling, um, then you can drag that wounded hip around behind you like a trophy for the rest of your life. Go deep. And thank you for going deep. I, I was aware of the, um, the depth of people's preparation for this question and of their deep love and commitment um, to the points of view that they believe promote justice. So I, I, I congratulate you for that. Um, and finally, I just want to say a word about, um, about the baggage up here. <laughs> the bags, I'm sorry, not the baggage. Um, the, uh, yeah, they, they're baggage, but uh, I travel a lot. I'm, I'm always getting on a plane to go somewhere, and very often I'm going with groups. I take groups places. And I don't know why I do that. It's sometimes really painful, but it's, <laughs> I guess I just like to travel and group, group travel gives you an excuse to do that. But if you've ever traveled, yeah, let, let's say you've got these friends and you decide, let's go somewhere together. And you thought you know them. Yeah. You, thought you, you thought you knew them. Yeah. But you never know anybody until you've traveled <laughs> with them. Now, interdependence is a beautiful word and a wonderful idea. And it is really important. But for interdependence to really um, be everything we hope it will be, it requires an enormous amount of forbearance because you're going to be traveling together in, yeah. in new ways. Yeah. And that traveling together will let you know one another in new ways as well. And not every discovery is delightful. So that's it. <laughs> Although sooner or later, most of them are. Um, but I have sensed in this hall tonight a willingness to be forbearing with one another. And if there is a virtue that will help us take the journey, it is that one. Forbear and love one another, but forbear. Bear one another's burdens. Carry each other's bags. All will be well. Good night.